Good morning and welcome to St. Christopher's, a church on a mission to lift up all as Christ calls. We are so delighted that you're able to join us today through the wonders of technology. Uh, we're grateful to our service participants as well. Uh, we are still in our modified COVID-19 socially distanced uh, worship configuration. So as we are doing that, we are able to still come together through the spirit of the, of the Holy Spirit and through prayer. You'll have everything you need in the leaflet, which if you're joining us online is in the PDF right in the chat next to your uh, viewing window. And please let us know how we can pray for you today in what way we can lift you up in the spirit. Also, if you uh, would like to make an offering today, please do so simply by going to our website and clicking on the donate button. And now as we gather ourselves in prayer, please do enjoy this time of musical offering. stand. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together, glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to answer readily the call of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and proclaim to all people the good news of his salvation, that we and the whole world may perceive the glory of his marvelous works, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is taken from the book of Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across it. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk. And he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, 
and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw what, he did, what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together selections from Psalm 62, verses 6 through 14. For God alone, my soul in silence waits. Truly, my hope is in him. He alone is my rock and my salvation my stronghold, so that I shall not be shaken. In God is my safety and my honor. God is my strong rock and my refuge. Put your trust in him always, O people. Pour out your hearts before him, for God is our refuge. Those of high degree are but a fleeting breath. Even those of low estate cannot be trusted. On the scales, they are lighter than a breath, all of them together. Put no trust in exhortation. In robbery, take no empty pride. Though wealth increase, set not your heart upon it. God has spoken once, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Steadfast love is yours, O Lord, for you repay everyone according to his deeds. The second reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending their nets. Immediately he called to them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. This week, like many of you, I'm sure, I turned, tuned in to watch the inauguration of Vice President Kamala Harris and President Joe Biden and was blown away by the power of the youngest poet laureate, Amanda Gorman's recitation of her poem, The Hill We Climb. If you have not heard it, please, after the service, go and Google it and listen to it. Even if you don't normally appreciate poetry, this is a masterclass in how words can dance and truly describe a moment. The poem spoke of our nation, the hill that we have climbed to witness the light that dawns anew if we have the courage to see it and to be it. But one line above all else spoke to me. 
It was how she describes our nation. She wrote, somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. Not broken, but simply unfinished. These words really convicted me this week. Hearing them made me realize that I can get really, really, really distracted by brokenness. The brokenness that I see in the world, the racism, the violence, the sexism, etc. The brokenness that I see in myself, the sins, the insecurities, the fears, the doubts. The brokenness seems to have a lot of power, or rather, I seem to give brokenness a lot of power. Power to take some hope away that this world will ever be better, as though the brokenness is somehow the end of the story. At times, I let it in my heart feel like brokenness is not just the end, but maybe even the whole story, something that can lead to hopelessness all too quickly. It seems Jesus knew that we have the propensity to give our attention far too often to the brokenness in this life. I think he knew that. I think he knew that when we are fearful, when we're in a state of stress, when we're living apart from God, we are given to letting the broken parts of our life have more weight than they deserve. The reason I think Jesus knew this is in part because of passages like our gospel reading today. In the gospel of Mark, Jesus is depicted as literally walking around, reminding people everywhere not to focus on the brokenness of this world, but instead on the sheer goodness of what it could be when it's finished. Can you hear it in our passage today? John was arrested. Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Not believe in the broken news. Believe in the good news. In this scene, we see that Jesus' beloved cousin and mentor, the one who baptized him, the one who gave him a mantle to wear of prophecy, the man named John, has been arrested. And we know, because we know the whole story, this will lead to his death. John will be killed by a broken, violent ruler whose wife had taken offense to him. He'll be killed by a broken system that says might makes right. He'll be killed by a broken fear that a call to prophetic repentance as John was wont to do, was something to be ignored or criticized or extinguished outright. He'll be killed by the very brokenness he has called us to repent of. I imagine that it would have been all too easy for Jesus to believe that brokenness had won in that moment. But Jesus does not dwell in the brokenness. Jesus, heartbroken, angry as I'm sure that he was, looks at the pain and brokenness and says, hear the good news of God. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Hear the goodness. Witness a world that isn't broken, but simply unfinished. And finish it, we must. Make no mistake. Jesus isn't pretending like there isn't anything wrong. Far from it. He knows. He knows what we humans are capable of. He knows that John will not be the only member of his family to die a bloody death at the hands of a broken world. But Jesus also knows what we're capable of if we live as God intended us to if we live as God created us to live. He knows what is possible when we live as members of God's perfect kingdom, 
where there is no sword drawn but the sword of righteousness, no strength known but the strength of love. The reason we feel so broken is because we have so often given into the temptation to believe that we are so broken and there is nothing we can do about it. But that's a lie. It's always been a lie. Things feel broken when we get off the path that leads us to being fully who we are as a nation and as ourselves. Things feel broken when we veer off the path into the, from the kingdom that we are to inherit and go instead in a different direction. Things feel broken when we turn to wander far in the land that is waste instead of pursuing the finishing of the kingdom. And Jesus knows this. This is why he, like John, calls us to repent, not to shame us, but to remind us. To remind us that we are not permanently broken, but simply unfinished. Repent, as you know, means to turn around, to walk back, to finish the unfinished business of bringing peace to this world, starting with ourselves, to return to God, and living our lives as God created us to live. Friends, Jesus knows how broken things have felt. Jesus knows how broken you have felt and sometimes feel. And Jesus knows we are unfinished. But the joy is that he walks this road with us to help us travel beyond the lies of brokenness to the finish line of joys and truth. And we have a long way to go. But we don't need to make that trip any longer than it has to be by staying on the wrong path. Like our nation, we are not broken, but simply unfinished, as Amanda Gorman so eloquently pointed out. In her own words, she says, and so we lift our gaze, not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. We close the divide because we know to put our future first, we must first put aside differences to lay down our arms so we can reach out our arms to one another. We seek harm to none and harmony to all. Let the globe, if nothing else, say this is true, that even as we grieved, we grew, that even as we hurt, we hoped. Even as we try, tired, we tried. We will rebuild, reconcile, and recover. Rebuild, reconcile, and recover. A new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light if we are brave enough to see it, if, if only we are brave enough to be it. No matter how we feel about the election or the inauguration, as God's people called to this time and place, we are given the opportunity to recognize our brokenness, but not give in to the lie that it is. We're given the opportunity to repent, to return to God, to begin walking anew that path that leads to that finishing in the good news of the kingdom of God. May we be brave enough to finish our stories with God's help and to be the light. Amen. Let us stand and turning to page five, Say the words anew of the, of the Nicene Creed as we proclaim our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, 
he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please kneel for the prayers of the people. kingdom of God has come near. Let us offer our prayers for the needs, concerns, and hopes of all God's people, saying, Hear, Hear us, us, we, we pray. pray. For the church, called like Jonah to preach God's word, and especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, and Hillary and Callie, our priests, that we may listen to God's call and respond in love and faithfulness. Hear us, we pray. For this parish family, remembering especially Callie as she celebrates her 10-year ordination anniversary, that we may faithfully announce the good news by our lives and draw others to Christ through deeds of love and compassionate service. Hear us, we pray. For the healing of our nation, that God will touch the hearts of people everywhere to yearn for the new ways to work together for the common good. Hear us, we pray. For the new administration and Congress, for Joe, our president, and Thomas, our governor, that God will inspire them with insight and understanding as they seek to address the health care, economic, and safety issues of our society. Hear us, we pray. For all who are ill, remembering especially Jim, Caroline, Randy, Dick, Toby, Tracy, Nancy, Lucy, Liam, Julian, Rowan, Lee, Brian, Laura, Debbie, Nadine, Skyler, Camp, Philip, Monica, Ron, Nancy, Jonathan, Diane, Ken, Susie, Roy, David, Kenny, Carol, Dennis, Kautz. And for those we now name either silently or aloud, that God will heal the sick protect the vulnerable, and strengthen all healthcare workers and those who administer the vaccine. Hear us, we pray. For those who have died, remembering those we now name either silently or aloud. For Bob, for Bill. That they may live in the joy of God's kingdom. Hear us, we pray. Lifting our voices with all creation, with St. Christopher, Paul, and Paul the Apostle, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To, to you, you, O Lord, Lord our God. God. God of infinite mercy, hear the prayers of your people and stir up our souls with longing to embrace your gospel and follow where Jesus leads, that we may do our part in your work of reconciliation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins 
known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. <laughs> Please be seated. Well, welcome again to St. Christopher's. Uh, we are delighted that you're able to join us this morning. As always, please do let us know where you're joining us from and leave us a uh, prayer request. We're so happy and honored to be able to pray with you. As we come into this time of communion, you will notice that we're using socially distanced practices uh, and lots of hand sanitizer. So we are following all the guidelines. Uh, and again, if you'd like to make a donation, please simply go to our website and click on the donate link uh, as part of our offering today. Uh, things happening in our church life that you might like to know about. Um, we are uh, doing a, a several different discipleship series at the moment, including a look at uh, the, the book of Esther, um, which we will beginning, be beginning this week in our Tuesday morning uh, Bible study. That's at 10 a.m. on the Zoom link. Uh, that should be a robust conversation. And we continue to go through uh, dreamers of the Bible, as well as looking at dream interpretation as a prayer tool on Sunday mornings at nine with our discipleship offering. Uh, and as always, we continue to be collecting food for those in need, especially at the St. James community. So if you are able to bring some canned goods and some food here at St. Christopher's, leaving them out on the breezeway, uh, we will take them to St. James to share with the community. And now ascribe unto God the honor due his name, bring offerings, and come into his courts.
All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee. Amen. Our worship continues with Eucharistic Prayer B, found on page 9 of your leaflet. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sacrificed, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Christopher and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. 
These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for a time of musical prayer.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.